Hello and welcome to Newspeak, the New Culture Forum's weekly look at the news agenda. This week, very pleased that, as usual, joined by Rafe Hadelmanku, Senior Fellow and Royal Commentator, and Philip Kisley, Dr. Philip Kisley from Leeds University, also Senior Fellow. Uh, we will be discussing things which, well, they weren't actually headline news, although they absolutely should have been. Uh, I think you will agree. First of all, immigration. It was announced last week the highest ever amount of people, 1.1 million people, were given visas. This is quite extraordinary. Uh, there are some people around, though, of course, who are saying that this is actually proving to be one of the benefits of Brexit. I don't know whether you will agree with that or not. Then we will be looking at the latest statues, which are now under threat, a particularly interesting example this week. And as well, uh, we will be asking you what you think of seeing fat people in ads. Um, first of all, the immigration story, actually, uh, which is quite extraordinary, Philip, is it not? Um, how is this number made up? This is 1.1 million visas given out last year. This was one of those stories that I, I looked at it and I looked at the headline and I thought it just can't be true. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was one of those things. But 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 reading reading between the lines, it obviously is. This is uh, workers who earn over twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. So there's an element of uh, skill there, yeah. uh, and they tend to come from India primarily, I think, and and and, and places like Africa. Um, there are also students. There are lots of students. Um, and and I know because I work in, in, in the sector, most of our postgraduate students are Chinese. So there are huge amounts of Chinese students. Um, there are lots of other stats you, you, you can break down, but, but essentially it's a, a, an enormous amount of people. I mean, bearing in mind, I don't know how many, um, what the population of the country is now, well, somewhere around 65 million. More than that, I think. Slightly yeah, more yeah, than yeah. that, but even so, 1.2 yeah. million. Uh, yeah. incoming in a year. That's on top of all of the Ill illegal immigration in, in, in boats coming across the channel. And um, one of the stats that, that sang out to me was, was an amazing stat that Albanians, uh, illegal immigrants, illegal Albanians, have increased in the last year 100-fold. So that tells you an awful lot about the kinds of migrants that are coming over. That's illegal, but we're talking about the, the legal migrants mm. here, and, and, and the, the numbers are just astonishing. How that's going to impact on us, God alone only knows. Uh, it's insane, isn't it? Yes, I'd like to say it's remarkable, but unfortunately I'm not at all surprised now. After 12 years of seeing the Tories continually fail to meet their manifesto pledges to reduce immigration, and it just seems obvious now that when Boris Johnson was saying take back control of our borders all he meant was take control have control back in, in Westminster but don't actually do anything to control immigration uh, this is a complete betrayal of all of those people who thought they were voting to limit immigration which was a clear categoric uh, reason for, for voting Brexit and actually it's essentially offering up Britain to globalism if this isn't uh, the exact antithesis of what Brexit was supposed to be about, I don't know what is. This is very much about anywheres uh, rather than somewheres. This is about globalism. And uh, quite frankly, you know, I've said it many times before, but we have had into this country over the last quarter of a century more immigration than in the last 2,000 years combined. The, the amount of refugees we got from, the, from Uganda uh, now and it will take up six weeks of um, of uh, immigration to this country at the moment. That's not what we that's not what we thought we were voting for. And if we're now having immigration on a scale of 1.1 million that dwarfs all other, I mean, yes, it's true that with visa immigrants they don't have the right to stay here indefinitely. We don't yet know what portion of those will end up staying here. But how can our infrastructure survive with that? We have a housing crisis. We've got a housing crisis. And uh, anyway, I I just think this is so scandalous and what's even more scandalous is that only one MP from the Tory side seems to have spoken up about this, yeah. Neil O'Brien yeah. mm -hmm. and I thought gosh mm -hmm. surely he should be a voice of hundreds within the party. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think the Common Sense Committee have said one or two things but um, bearing in mind we've got an absolute 
catastrophe on the horizon with um, with fuel bills and, and people not being able to pay their mortgages and just a general economic downturn which is like we've, we haven't seen since the, the, the post-war days pushing people in into the country at, at, at the rate we are doing is just grotesque because because who who you know who's going to suffer with this mm. and the, the people who are going to suffer are, are, are working class English people but the thing is you see what, what I feel uh, get, it gets me about this is you, you know you talk about the betrayal is that there's been a liberalization mm. at the same time Tw you said 20,000 has been the kind of um, the uh, threshold mm. uh, that is that's a liberalization for a start mm. And Eastern European immigration has more or less collapsed, hasn't it, mm. from Europe? And I mean, y you do sort of feel, you, know, you can almost understand it in a way. What is going on? Mm. You know, if you're adding this to the population, what the hell, what is the motive? What is the motive? Is it entirely simply down to the des desires of big business? Is it that? Well, for, for me, it's, it, I, I don't even, go that far in terms of conspiracy i don't think there is a just a a, a, a a huge amount of conspiracy here i think it's just complete and utter ineptitude and an, an inability to understand what's going on it's it's a it's a it's making decisions for tomorrow rather than making decisions for next week and and it and it's like i said before it's it's just grotesque because all we can see in the future is doom and gloom for a certain kind of person and it might be there might be some kind of you know um there might be some kind of strategy that that, that we don't know about but as far as i can see it's stupidity the, pro I mean, the problem here is that we didn't get a chance to vote on the type of brexit we wanted yeah. there were various types of brexit that's but the thing this form of brexit is one which is completely open it's you know it is it's not quite yet that's singapore on the, on, on the thames mm -hmm. uh but it's getting near to that and that, that was a policy which actually Nigel Farage supported. Right? Nigel Farage, who's you know, campaigning now against illegal immigration, yeah. doesn't campaign against legal no. immigration. If you remember, he was distinctly saying throughout the campaign, we will bring people from India, yeah. from Africa, from yeah. China, rather than from Europe. Yeah. So he has his part to, to play in this in, in terms of, of, al of allocating blame. Although well, he was saying, sorry, uh, yeah. he, was, he was saying in the paper, uh, the Telegraph thing, Oh, um, if this goes on, then there's going to be another political insurgency. He, did, he didn't say, I will lead it, but he was saying there's a, going to be another mm -hmm. insurgency. D would you say that? I, I mean, I'm wondering whether, do people, I mean, people do care enormously uh, from the comments that we get, you know, from, from, from our viewers. Um, do, do they care, care in enough numbers? Well, this is the great tragedy. The, that, the point I wanted to make on the on Previously, there was also the fact that because we're now going out for these trade deals around mm. the world rather than having a customs union, say, mm. is the fact that India can then put stipulations saying, mm. all right, you will have this trade deal if you allow X number of yeah. students, yeah. if you allow X number of our mm. population to come over on visas. Mm. Mm. That's why I think in large part you've got mm. such a high number of uh, people coming over is because the British government, to get a free trade agreement, has had to accept these quotas. Yeah from these countries and this again was something we weren't exposed mm -hmm. to but yes you're quite right the amazing thing was if you remember 2015 when you had that original refugee crisis the uh, the British public ranked immigration as their top issue mm -hmm. that's why we won Brexit mm -hmm. and amazingly a huge proportion of the population think that Brexit has actually stopped immigration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and immigration is now I think the fourth or fifth or even sixth item mm -hmm. uh, on people's <laughs> list of agendas it's it's so low and it's what I can't understand is why people can't see through the smoke and mirrors mm. of the Conservative Party. We talk tough, and people on the left seem to think this government is uh, such a fascist regime. Mm. People on the right seem to be think, oh, they're doing a good <laughs> job. And I'm like, am I the only yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, one I who think, can't uh, see that this is simply talk? Yeah. I, I think what we've got is a parody of Brexit. That that's precisely what it is. It's a it's a, paris, it's a parody, and, and and the you know the the Remainers, the Ramonas, uh, are, are laughing at us, you know, night and day. I think that's precisely what we've got. I think I think Peter, you say, do people care? I think they do care, but I think there is going to be there is going to come a flashpoint when people are cold and hungry, and they they're living on 
you know, lots of people are living on baked beans and they can't put the they can't put the heating on in November. Then they're really going to care. And I, I would say I don't I, I don't like looking into the future because I'm not very good at it. But there will be you know there will be real unrest. I think. Uh, edging towards Christmas. Yeah, I mean, obviously, no people don't want unrest. I mean, obviously, you know, we don't. I, I just sort of feel that what's missing from all of this, you know, is that even during the campaign, the, the, the referendum campaign, and certainly afterwards, everything was everything was talked about in terms of economics. Nothing was really talked about culturally, mm -hmm. like the fact that the face of all of our cities is changing hugely. In fact, I would say in the past five years. Of course, we're going to have these census results out later this year, mm. aren't we? That will actually tell us quite the difference that it's made. And you sort of think, well, are we a nation or are we a, just a landing strip? Well, I know, I think we're a nation. Mm. No? Well, you'll remember at the time of, the, of Brexit, a lot of people on the Brexit side, myself included, said, we don't mind having a poorer country if it saves our culture. Mm. Preserving mm. our culture is more important. Mm. If that means we knock off a couple mm. of percentage points mm. off the GDP, mm. we, the people on the left couldn't understand that. Mm. And yet it seems as if now that we've got Brexit, that entire reason was is lost forever. And it's been taken over by the neoconservatives, not by the traditional high Tories, no. yes. uh, people like myself, Roger mm. Scruton, mm. and mm. ourselves, all who believe in preserving communities. It's gone off into this cowboy land of mm. people who are just out to, to basically uh, streamline Britain's economic services. Well, speaking of which, actually, there was a, an interesting article in the Telegraph by their business editor, who's Ambrose Pritchard Evans, and he, I assume, now he was a Brexiteer, I believe, but he was sort of saying, look, so there, you know, everything they said about immigration and Brexit was wrong. We're more and more liberal and. Basically, the implication seemed that this was a good thing, and sure enough, there was Jonathan Portis, who is a strong pro-migration mm -hmm. uh, lobbyist, simply saying, I, "I'm glad I'm wrong because uh, you know we've got many more immigrants." And you sort of think, "Wait a minute, are you seriously putting forward that actually this is a benefit of Brexit?" Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary, no? It, it, I read, I read the piece actually, and, and it was, it was one of the the most bizarre pieces of, uh, of journalism I've ever read. I mean, the, 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 the problems were, were, were put into, in, into one paragraph, and we've already talked about that. The main thing for me, actually, is the housing crisis mm -hmm. um, um, and, and education, the fact that um, our British students just, just can't get into university now because there aren't the places. Mm -hmm. um, that was just there. And then there was this great puff piece about, uh, essentially, isn't isn't immigration great mm. and if you would have taken out the word brexit and replaced it with remain mm. the article actually would have made sense but reading it with the word brexit in there it just really didn't i was i was i was reading all of these uh you know economic forecasts and 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 statistics and and economic models and i thought I actually don't believe this. Mm, mm. I mean, that was that was that was my response. I don't believe this, but I'm always the same with economics because it's far from a. This from is a, 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 the problem you know, as well. Science. I mean, I know you've mentioned this very on a, a, a number of occasions. The problem is that by, I mean, the, what's happening in the channel, you know, it, you can't can't quite believe it. All these young men with phones, extremely healthy looking, fighting age, all this, all coming up. But it sort of masks, isn't it, the whole problem? Mm. That's what we were saying about Nigel Farage, really. Mm. And that is that we have got these colossal 50,000 people net into this mm. country up to about 1997. Well, there are, as, as Rafe was saying before, there are actually two different things. They're completely different. Illegal immigration with, with boats from, from, uh, from France is one thing. That's completely, that should be stopped absolutely. Legal immigration should be managed, and it's just a complete free for all at the moment. Mm -hmm. They are two completely different things, but we tend to focus on those very emotive images, don't mm -hmm. we? And what we don't do is see this tsunami of people. What would you do about it? I'd freeze immigration, just mm -hmm. halt it. Mm -hmm. um, what people have to realize is, for example, if you look at immigrant countries like America and Canada, then there was a vast flood of immigrants to uh, America in the late 19th century. And then at around 1920, the Americans were beginning to see problems from that l large number of uh, immigrants. They were destabilizing society, leading to unrest. So they halted immigration for about 40 years, 1920 to 1960. And 1920 to 1960 was the period of the greatest 
development of America. Mm. It was its golden age, mm. and it was its most united, patriotic, yeah. and um, essentially, uh, well, a uni in united country. Yeah. Um, after 1960, immigration started up again, and you have more troubles. Mm. We were, we're reaching the similar saturation point. Well, we've long su surpassed that saturation yeah. point. We need to have time to assimilate yeah. and absorb those who've come here for, I would say, a minimum 25, 30, 40 years in order to actually regain control of, our, of, of the way that mm. societies that we have are existing. Yeah, there needs to be that, that, that period of, of, of coalescing, doesn't it? I mean, what we've had since essentially since 1948 is wave after wave after wave after wave of immigration, non-stop, you know, and then going from the 90s and the 2000s going up exponentially. Now, I'm not against immigration per se. I'm from an immigrant background myself. My father came here in 1959. But um, there needs to be some kind of, you know, someone needs to put a foot on the brake. And, and we all know that. And that's what, I don't know, what 90% of people want as well. And yet we never get what we vote for. We haven't got Brexit and we haven't got a Conservative government. We've got a Conservative government, but it's all in, in one in but name. Yeah. Now, li uh, liberals, of course, will come back and they'll say, oh, but you can't do that. How will our industry survive? How will, how will any of the country be able to be run without immigrants coming in? Well, look at Japan. Mm. <laughs> Japan mm. has the what fifth largest, mm. third largest economy in the world. Mm. Sorry, third largest economy in the world, or was it fourth? One or the other. Uh, they have minimal immigration. I mean, mm. trying to immigrate to Japan is almost impossible. Mm. I mean, they are the, probably the most mm. homogenous population mm. on the planet, mm. and they're managing to function mm. as an economy. So how come they mm. can do it and we can't? Hear but it, it? but it's 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 a, it's a stupid thing to say, isn't it? Because that isn't the problem. The problem is that we've de-skilled the population over the last fifty years. That's the problem. You know, and so we need to reskill the population. That's what we need to well, do. Well, I think the de-skilled, that's actually a rather nice way of putting it. I mean, I think people have been thrown on the scrap heap. Yeah. I think they've been thrown on the scrap heap. Mm. And, uh, but, you know, it, this point about, yes, I would agree with that, this idea of a moratorium or a pause. Mm. The only party offering that is the SDP, <laughs> which I'm sure many people mm. won't even know is actually around. So I don't mean to be rude to them, but it's a kind of new version of the old SDP. They have, they're kind of economically left, broadly speaking, culturally more on the right. And they, have, they want a 20-year, I think, pause. Um, what I find interesting, though, is that like, when there's sort of huge amounts of immigration, people are saying, this is the sign of a prosperous society. This is the sign. No wonder they all want to come to London, blah, blah, blah. No wonder they all want to wherever. Yeah, but in the, in, in, the other in the other press, they'll say, this is the most racist place in the world. This is a horrible place. It just doesn't make sense. Yes, it does doesn't. It? But also, it doesn't make sense now. Because mm. what, is, what, what they're for is the huge kind of magnet now. Now that we are facing, well, possibly depression now, I say, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so where is the where is the magnet? It, so in other words, people, you you look and think, what is it that you people want? The people who are open borders, the people who are never asked on the BBC what their motives are. If you are worried about migration, boy, do they go into your motives, right? Mm. But the mm. people who are they're never asked. Half the people they get on there are open borders people. So you sort of have these open borders people are what good old fashioned Marxists well intentioned wh whatever you know or not um, it is just a quite remarkable um, when you were saying about waves and waves the most important point really to make in a way is up to 97 it was about 50,000 people mm. yeah to me that seems fine mm. I, d I don't think anyone's really mm. It's not immigration, it's, mm. it's what's happening. This is a historic it's numbers. level. It's, it's it? numbers. It's, 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 it's yeah, mass immigration yeah. rather yeah. than yeah. immigration. Yeah, exactly. I should say, even when America had its freeze, mm. people were still coming over, mm. but they weren't coming over in vast numbers. Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, uh, the immigration, uh, at the same time, you know, many people would have thought that the whole statue toppling thing has kind of gone a bit. We don't hear about it so much, but it is there quietly bubbling under the under the news agenda and there was a piece this week which I thought was particularly well is it ironic is the word mm. I don't know but 
Can you well, tell us about it? Yes, I'll just another I word, insidious. I think this is, <laughs> yes. this is, this is such a, a desperately sad and desp despicable story. So Parliament, uh, you know, is having this review of its collections of statues and paintings and so forth. And just as the National Trust and others have done, they're creating a report listing all of the items in its art collection that, that have uh, links to slavery. And they've identified amongst this, uh, amongst this group Edmund Burke, who was the, perhaps the 18th century's greatest proponent of ab abolishing the slave trade, who actually proposed a bill in Parliament to prevent slave owners from sitting in Parliament mm. because their, their values were an affront to British mm. liberty. Mm. And you, know, you may as well try to you know, put a Martin Luther King statue or a Nelson Mandela statue, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, mm. into this thing. And what is the link with slavery? Because his brother uh, made money from plantations. Now, I'm sorry, we've gone from the guilt of the father and should, should not be meted out, the sins of the father should not be meted out onto the son, yeah. to the brother. I mean, what's so insidious about this is that your mere relationship or association, even though you're completely innocent, now makes you stained with this original sin of, of slavery. And what this does is it, inf it infects every single thing in the, we have in this country. Mm. Uh, there'll be nothing that is free from the sin of yeah. slavery, mm. even if it is completely innocent. Yeah. Mm. And this just creates this image or this atmosphere or this impression uh, for you know, immigrants to this country and others who are more mm. ignorant, mm. people, students and children, who just see links to slavery, to think that everybody in our history yeah. has got some dirty well, that, uh, connection. That, that's the end game, isn't it? And this is called adjacency, isn't it? So mm. this is, you know, you, you, you met someone once on a Tuesday in 1973, so you're, you're completely responsible for all of their actions. Uh, so you, you've got this sense that, that you can't get away from it and there is no you you can't you you, you can't make yourself innocent because you, you you're tainted by association that's the whole thing um it's just you're talking about it being ironic it being insidious the the ironic thing is of course that you know um edmund burke um tried to make took the the dreadful things of, of his era and tried to make them better you know these people absolutely embody some of the worst aspects of our own. These people These, I'm talking about the, the statue fiddlers here. I call them the statue <laughs> fiddlers, that's yeah, what they yeah, are. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, they, they, they embody the worst aspects. They are, they are the culture warriors, aren't they? You know, we get called culture warriors uh, because, you know, we, we oh, want to stay in the culture. culture there isn't, no, no, there isn't even a culture war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they just embody the worst aspects of, of, of what's going on in 21st century Britain. So presumably the Tories have been well up in arms about this. Well, what is that? I mean, if you think that you know the, uh, the Houses of Parliament can't be uh, controlled, how can you keep? If you can't put your own house in order, mm. how on earth are you going to put mm. the rest of the country in order? But you know, there's another. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do sort of wonder whether there's some d deliberate um, Machiavellian work at play here, because Edmund Burke is the father of the conservatism, conservatism. Yeah. Mm. and he's so pristine, mm. it's, uh, nothing has ever stuck to him, mm. and they finally found some tangential way mm. yeah. in which to actually try to, try to bring him down. Yeah. This was a man who stood for in the institutions of the country, traditions, for the emancipation of, the, of, the, of, the, of Catholics, a man who really believed in virtue and manners as being bedrocks of society, mm. civilization, mm. tradition, all the things conservatives stand for, and it looks as if now the, uh, the, the left have a means for which to dismantle him. Well, he's, a, he's a, a, a cultural, philosophical, intellectual giant being brought down by pygmies, essentially. Yeah, but it is, it is also, you say, it is actually trying to blacken. Yeah. It's like Abraham Lincoln in, yeah. in, in America. Yeah. Who would have thought, you know, that they would actually even get to the stage where mm. it's questioned that mm. there should be a statue? Mm. Mm. I mean, it is quite extraordinary. What I think is quite interesting is, is the, ha the Houses of Parliament, where this statue is, the, they are now undergoing all this renovation, not on the outside, on the inside, mm. aren't they? So Parliament's actually going to move move out for a while. I think they've got some balsa wood chamber up the road somewhere for a few years. I think that's the deal. When it comes back, I wonder how much it's going to be wokeified. You know, because the place is covered, is it not? Mm. I mean, mm. in commemorating mm. this, commemorating that. Mm. I mean, you know, this is this is really like the 1619. Well, it, it is literally, you know, we'll take you out so we could strip out all of the culture and then you can come back to a, to a purified space that has nothing to do whatsoever with England. Speaking of England and contemporary England, we've just had the Notting Hill Carnival. Um, 
and this time I believe do correct me if I'm wrong it was over 70 uh, assaults I think there was that was on police 70 assaults on on police officers and I think one or two sexual assaults on police officers as right well. yeah. stabbings uh, there was a, a, a few stabbings and, and, and one murder and something like 200 arrests yeah uh, this should this stop should we just get rid of it should we just stop having the carnival yes it should be ticketed something it should it should be well, oh, no, it should no. be well changed. that's a different thing it's a different question all right but well no the, the first thing is it should be stopped and then if it if if it needs to become something else that that, that isn't a, a threat to life and limb then then that's the next conversation but the first conversation is yes of, co of course it should be stopped i mean you, you can't you know all those those figures there are more as well you can break them down in, in various kinds of ways but if if it was any other demographic then, then yeah. everybody, every everybody would be up in arms. But I was, I, I, I saw the, the uh, well, I, I, I read the story in, in in the Mail, I think, and I think you said it was in the Telegraph as well. The footage, if viewers have seen the footage of the guy, just a great big fifteen stone guy punching a, a woman mm. out completely, mm. was uh, was 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 horrific. I've not seen any of the the, the left-leaning papers take up the story at all. Well, they wouldn't because they would, say, they would sort of say, well, you know, it's a tiny minority of how many people go there, a million or something. And that's the problem. Look, if, if what's happened in the Notting Hill Carnival over the last 10 years had happened at an annual St George's Day parade, mm. guarantee you that would have been cancelled in the first oh, year, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. Uh, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. And what we have here is essentially just another facet of the same the same sickness that's gri gripped our institutions that you saw in Rotherham, for example. Yeah. The politically correct brigade, including our institutions, mm. aren't willing to call things by their name, mm. and aren't willing to face up to reality, and so they are allowing things to go on which mm. wouldn't be allowed to be going on with any other group. Now look, Notting Hill, uh, there was a plan a few years ago to, to move the Notting Hill Carnival into Hyde Park where it could be actually uh, ticketed, you could have metal detectors and so forth. Yeah. Notting Hill has long ceased to be a, 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 res a residential area with any Caribbean population. The days of Peter mm. Rackman with all of his uh, stuff mm. in the 1560s mm. is long gone. Mm. There's no connection now with Notting Hill mm. and it's very hard to police on these streets. If you're going to have it, move it into uh, Hyde Park, yeah. ticket it, have metal detectors and a strong police presence yeah. and you can contain things. Most, mm. um, most people, a lot of people live in Notting Hill, just simply scarper for the weekend. Mm. Having boarded up their windows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, can you imagine yeah. any other parade where you yeah, would need yeah, to do that? Mm. Maybe on the, you know, the, the Orange Parade in Northern Ireland. But but don't you actually think most people in London are quite indifferent to it at the very most now? I mean, it's sort of, it's this emblem, isn't it, of the multicultural city and all of that. But I think most people actually see it as a bit of an irritant. Um, but this is, there's always well, trouble the, on the, the last night, isn't there? The police force dread it, and they've actually come out and said they well we, we oh, dread yes, it. They did, didn't they? The the we, we dread it. Yes, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, it's 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 just it's, it's part of it's part of that whole thing. It's and I think, I think it's immoral actually that that the left keep quiet about the, the the sexual assaults that go on the, the the murder you know all of the you know the, the complete and utter there was a murder is that is that confirmed well yes. someone's yeah, died yeah, yeah. 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 It was a stabbing. Uh, it was a stabbing mm -hmm. um, but it comes back to what Thomas Sowell says and 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 this idea of the very patronizing idea of the left of, of championing the 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 kind of worst aspects of black culture which is what the left do and mm. and Thomas Sowell says that that really holds people back mm. because if all, all you if you completely identify black culture with gangster rap and 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 drug taking and, and knives and guns then of course that's not going to be good for, for, for black people but but the left make excuses for that and they actually actively champion that as well mm. and that is the the absolutely immoral aspect of it for me well I think it might you know it might this was the first one after two years off during the pandemic mm. wasn't it um, I mean some of the clips of this extraordinary mass of people mm. how there isn't more happening mm. I do not know mm. you know mm. it's extraordinary but um, I should add that the police have actually that Federation of Police 
officers, I think it is, or whatever, mm -hmm. have said that in fact it should it should be stopped. You know, they said they dread it. They've actually called for it to be closed down. Well, uh, well, that's good because you know, we were talking last week, weren't we, about how completely and utterly ineffectual the police have become. Um, mm -hmm. and, and how things like house breakings are, are, are pretty much decriminalized now. I think that was that's actually one of the headlines I think today. Um, so so it's good that, that they've come out and said that. That's a good thing as far as I can see. Well, um, our last story we were going to we have a picture on the screen actually just for your delight and delectation. Um, if you're aware of Abercrombie and Fitch, the clothing company, um, the American clothing company, known for their views for sort of young American models and actors, whatever, who take part in it. Um, they have now, this is one of their new ads. Um, this is, how can I put it? Uh, you can see for yourself. <laughs> can I put um, do, what do you think of this? Do you think when you see ads like with very fat chicks, for example, it could be guys as well. Do you sort of think like I do, this is yet another attack, a woke attack, for example, this time on beauty. Do you see, do you think that? Or I, what's the purpose of it? Is, are people really gonna buy their products when they see that? I, th I think there's, a, a, there's a, 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 a kind of collusion going on. We see these images and we know exactly what, what, the, what, the, what the, you know, the producers are trying to do. And we all, we don't buy into it. We don't, we don't actually say to ourselves, I've had lots of conversations about this with different kinds of people from, from all, all parts of the political spectrum. And we don't say this is beautiful. We say this is box ticking or this is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's because that's precisely what it is. I think one of the things it does do is promote and celebrate massively unhealthy lifestyles mm. because if you know the the, the mm. size of the model that, that we're talking about there that just isn't healthy well they're going they're kind of going maybe overboard a bit Abercrombie and Fish because uh, there was um uh, they've had kind of a, a rather checkered history haven't they because they, they 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 were accused essentially of being racist weren't they? because all of their models mm. were kind of American college kid white American mm. college kids there was a documentary, I think, on Netflix all about it. And they, in fact, they've really gone right down, haven't they? The rabbit hole commercial, mm. haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I'm very pleased to announce my three-year contract with Calvin, oh. Calvin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be their new underwear models. They're coming to a, a double-decker bus, probably, near you sometime I soon. I can't wait to see yes. it. I can't um, wait to see it. But, uh, I know, it's grotesque. It's, 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 gr <laughs> it's grotesque, be, quite frankly, right? Yeah. There, there are standards of beauty which are universal, mm. perhaps with the exception of Rubens. Mm. Uh, we know, essentially, symmetry. Where, where, whichever culture you go to, just go to India, look at the Hindu mm. sculptures on on uh, mm. on temples you just l look at neoclassical beauty uh, everywhere that there are those standards and you know if you go to if, you know, it's not just human beings you go to the supermarket you go for the nice looking apple mm. not the squishy <laughs> squishy one yes, yes. and this is just trying to subvert all of our values and standards yeah. as well right this is mm. a part of it so yeah it is absolutely promoting unhealthy lifestyles and telling people whatever you choose to do is fine well no mm. firstly you're causing a you know excessive charges on the national health service mm. i suspect as well mm. so this is also affecting us thank you very mm. much if you're promoting mm. this lifestyle to other people i mean you might as well if you if you're going to do this then you you might as well promote um uh, really far down the line alcoholics you might as well just have alcoholics on there you know running around in, in with no clothing <laughs> Or you might, or you know, or people people smoking with with yellow fingers and and you know, with no teeth and you know and, and about to kind of uh, about to keel over and die as well. It's exactly the same thing. Well, isn't it's it? funny in the nineteen nineties. You remember Kate Moss? Uh, they had yeah. that her heroin chic look, yeah. and I remember I, I didn't know who she was, and I thought this was one of these homeless charities mm. <laughs> posters that she had to vote for. And this is again, it's a disconnect mm. from reality. What mm. people like mm. and what we're being forced to. to mm. But what I, what I didn't quite get about this is that. It, there's a commercial consideration surely at stake who I mean this isn't the first time I think Jordan Peterson was thrown off Twitter was he not or he something was for saying because that isn't of beautiful. Sports yeah. Illustrated yeah. it was a, it was a, again a, a oversized yeah. model on sports this is Sports Illustrated you know yeah. which is like men's health you know I mean quite extraordinary mm. that they would put it on what are they playing at I mean I think th there was a it's I, I put it in my um, film, The War on Our History, actually, and it was, a, it was an image of a, a woman who was a therapist 
uh, in, in America and she said um, to abolish fat phobia you know we need to uh, we need to deconstruct the, the whole of the Western world you know yes, so I think I you, I I, 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 viewers might have seen seen the image this, this woman there saying you know we need we, you know, to abolish fat phobia we need to deconstruct the whole of the Western world that's what they want to do you're right that's what well there's a do. fat chance of that there's a show. fat <laughs> chance of that <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much, Rave. And uh, we shall see you next time. And uh, so don't miss it. And I think next time Emma will be back. So uh, see you then. Okay. Bye bye. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.